Someone suggested to me today that it was all right to play that song in church because it talks about Parson Brown. And I believed them! It's a nice uh, prelude to the sermon, I thought. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I do not take snow for granted because I'm from South Texas, and for the first 22 years of my life until I moved out of that area, I hardly ever saw snow. In fact, I wrote, I wrote a song a few years back about a Texas boy in New York, and one of the lines said this, snow is a stranger when you're from San Antonio, cowboy boots sure slip and slide on icy cobblestone. But every couple of years, usually in February, around Washington's birthday, every couple of years, when I was a boy in San Antonio, there would be a magical day, a magical day when snow would come, and there would be no school, and kids would have snowball fights, and we would make snowmen, and usually we would put a snowball in the freezer so that a few weeks later we could take it out and look at it and feel envy for those lucky boys and girls up north who had so much more of this enchanted stuff than we did. And snow still captivates me. I can watch it falling for hours. That's better than TV, watching snow come down. And it's fascinating how each little snowflake has its unique shape its unique design that really shows God's creativity at work, God's infinite imagination crafting even little particles of snow in a unique way. Of course, we often associate snow with Christmas, and that may be a little odd. Even if Jesus was born in December, there probably wasn't snow on the ground. And yet, because so much of the Christian world is, is snowy at Christmas time, we always think of snow when we think of Christmas. And I think that's especially true when it comes to songs. Think of all the wonderful music that celebrates Christmas snow. Larry played Winter Wonderland a moment ago. There's also It's a Marshmallow World in the Winter. Baby, it's cold outside. Jingle bells. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Frosty the snowman. It's lovely weather for a sleigh ride together with you and many others. And we cannot forget, we cannot forget the little ditty that begins with these words. The sun is shining, the grass is green, the orange and palm trees sway. There's never been such a day in Beverly Hills, L.A., but it's December the 24th, and I'm longing to be up north. What song is it that begins with those words? Ooh. It's White Christmas. That is the little-known verse to White Christmas. Very rarely sung, but it kind of sets the tone and gives you the, the story behind the song. It's someone who's in a warm climate and who's longing for the, the winters of his or her childhood. And it's a song that came out during, uh, during World War II in 1942, and it became a huge hit. And maybe that was because... A lot of American soldiers and sailors and Marines were serving in places where there wasn't a lot of snow at Christmas, like North Africa or the South Pacific, far from home and far, far from any sight of snow. Actually, New York, when you think about it, doesn't get that many white Christmases. Our snow usually comes in, in January. The classic New York Christmas movie is, of course, Miracle on 34th Street, and there's not a hint of snow in that movie. And that's pretty accurate. A white Christmas is pretty rare in New York. Although we, we had a bunch of snow a couple of weeks ago with the Nor'easter. And didn't we have snow on Halloween like last year, year before? Yeah, so anything could happen at this point. So maybe we will get a white Christmas after all. But even if the ground is bare at Christmas, we're still going to have snow in our hearts, in our minds, in our imaginations. Even if we don't have a white Christmas, we're still going to be dreaming of one. Because really, Christmas snow brings joy. Christmas snow brings joy. I, um, in a newsletter article a couple of, uh, a couple of years ago, I, I, I talked about how I, I collect depressing Christmas songs. Don't ask me why, I just collect depressing Christmas songs. 
And probably the most depressing Christmas song of all is Dan Fogelberg's Same Old Lang Syne. And you know what the last line in that most depressing of all Christmas songs is? The last line is, the snow turned into rain. And that's one reason why the song is depressing. Because the white Christmas turned into a wet Christmas. Rain is depressing, but snow. Snow is a source of delight. So Christmas snow brings joy. And if we, we really want to appreciate why snow is such a joyful thing, it would be good to consider what snow means spiritually, what snow means in the Bible. And, and, and in general, the Bible thinks of snow as an image of purity. If you want to understand what the Bible, uh, how the Bible uses snow, that's the one word you need to, to, to keep in mind, purity. Snow represents purity. And you can certainly see why. When you wake up in the morning after a snowfall, the world really does look pure and clean. Pure as the driven snow is a familiar expression. The snow doesn't stay that way. Soon enough, it's disturbed by boots and discolored by cars and dogs. And soon enough, it, it becomes what the song Betty Davis Eyes calls pure as New York City snow. It gets slushy and mushy, and it turns into a mess. But for those first few minutes, when you look out upon that fresh fall and snow before anything disturbs it, there is a beauty and there is a purity that few things can rival. And so in the Bible, snow becomes an image for the purity and the beauty of God, of God in his glory, God in his splendor. The reading we had from Revelation describes the risen Jesus this way. And his head and his hair were white, white as wool, white as snow, and his eyes were like a flame of fire. And Daniel similarly describes God this way. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. And when Jesus was transfigured before his disciples, and divine glory shone from him, the Bible says his garments became exceedingly white, white as snow. So the intense beauty... And the intense purity of snow reminds us of the wondrous glory of God. And you know, snow sometimes dazzles us. The, the, the sun shines brightly on the snow, and sometimes it gives us what's called snow blindness. And the glory of God can be like that, too. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai, the people couldn't look at him. Because his face actually picked up some of God's glory, and they could not stand to look upon that glory on Moses' face. And when Isaiah saw God in the temple, Isaiah was overwhelmed by the sight. Woe is me, for I am undone, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the Lord. So even the phenomenon of snow blindness tells us something about God's glory. That sometimes the glory of God is too much for a sinful human being to look at. And, and really, in a way, that's why God comes to us in Jesus. The purity, the beauty of God does not blind us or overwhelm us when we encounter it in a little baby. God puts his dazzling glory in that little baby so that we can approach him. So that we can draw near to him. We, we, we don't need a special pair of holy sunglasses when we come to Jesus. The glory is there. The beauty is there. But it does not threaten us. It does not overwhelm us. We are not blinded by the light. In one of our beloved Christmas songs, we sing, Radiant beams from thy holy face with the dawn of redeeming grace. So yes, we see God's light in the face of the baby Jesus. But it's not a light that overcomes us. It's a light that gladdens us. So when we think of the intense light on the snow that, that gets so intense that it blinds us, let's give thanks that God's glory in the baby Jesus does not blind us. Rather, it gives us joy. Through the baby Jesus, something absolutely pure and absolutely beautiful has come into your life, the glory of God. So even, 
If you're dealing with some ugly things right now, even if you're dealing with some challenges right now, there is something in your life that is supremely beautiful. Remember that. Let Christmas snow remind you of that, that through Christ, the beauty of God has shone upon you. Snow also speaks to us about God's great blessing to us, the forgiveness of sin. Listen to some of the scripture that we've heard tonight. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. The idea here is that sin stains us. And all those stains are hard to get out. Uh, scripture kind of imagines our lives being like, like a white garment. And that garment is stained. Oh, it's stained. You know, I wear a lot of black. And black is a great color. Because black does not show a lot of stains. Shows the dog hair, I gotta say that. But it doesn't show a lot of stains. But white, white shows every stain dramatically. And the Bible envisions our lives that way, that our lives are like garments, white garments that have been stained by sin. But Jesus gets those stains out. His blood purifies, cleanses. His blood washes away sin so that we become pure again. We become whiter than snow when St. John sees all the saints in heaven in these pure, beautiful white garments. The angel says they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So yes, the blood of Jesus gets our lives whiter than snow. And blessed Martin Luther, our, our father in the faith, had this great image for forgiveness. Luther invites me to imagine myself as a heap of garbage, a pile of refuse. Actually, I think Luther had something even more earthy than garbage in mind, but we're going to keep this sermon G-rated, okay? So I imagine myself as a pile of garbage, dirty, smelly, disgusting with sin. And then the snow comes, and the snow falls on that heap of garbage that is sinful me. And that heap of garbage that is sinful me becomes Beautiful, beautiful, covered by the snow, covered by the snow, that garbage pile that is sinful me is just as lovely as the trees, just as lovely as the hills, just as lovely as anything else that the snow covers. The snow brings to that garbage pile a beauty and a purity that it did not have before. And that's what Jesus does for me. He covers up my sin. He does that for every one of us. He covers our sin with his own spotless, pure righteousness. He covers us with the forgiveness that he purchased for us on the Holy Cross. And so we become beautiful. We become pure. We are still sinners, but a wonderful beauty has come into our lives. We are covered with the lovely and pure holiness of Jesus Christ, just like Anything ugly when the snow falls is covered by it and made beautiful. So tonight, our Christmas snow has a few simple messages for us. God is glorious and pure and beautiful. And God, God's glory has come to us in Jesus Christ. And Jesus forgives you and me and covers our sin and makes us beautiful. One morning this winter... One morning this winter, we will look out the window and there will be snow on the ground and the beauty of that snow will take our breath away. And then, yes, there will come that sobering moment when we realize I have to shovel this stuff. But between the moment when you look out and see the dazzling beauty and the moment when you realize you're going to have to clean it up, in the time between those two moments, remember this. Through the glory of Christ, through the forgiveness of Christ, through the blood of Christ, God has made you beautiful in his eyes. Glory be to him now and always. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ to life everlasting. Amen.